Oftentimes, it gives people the giggles when we talk about healthy bowel movements and good intestinal health, but they are very important. And here to tell us why it's important and how people are suffering right across the country, we're joined by Bryce Wild, alternative health specialist. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Well, thanks, it's great Derek. to have you here. Thanks, so, do the majority of Canadians do they have good gut health? The reality is no. You know, we most of us maybe think we do, we're unsure about what that really even means. But it'll right. alarm you to know that five million Canadians suffer from irritable bowel syndrome. So, so what is ir irritable bowel syndrome? So that's syndrome. sort of a reaction of the gut either to foods and environment within the gut, an unhealthy probiome we call this, a good and bad bacteria, or dysbiosis, lack of fiber, you know, just simply a lack of a good diet and or even exercise, a lot of contributing factors, but it can lead to a chronic constipation, Right. or diarrhea. So there's IBS-C and then there's IBS-D. And so what a lot of folks don't even realize, in fact, we have uh, you know, a Bristol stool chart to show everybody. Which everyone's here. excited right. about, I'm so sure. But it this is, is important. Right? It is very important. So you know, if you're eating breakfast, maybe uh, you know, uh, put your Cheerios <laughs> aside for a moment here. But before we pull the Bristol stool chart up, we have a 3-3 three, three rule. Okay. You don't want to go more than three times a day, but it'll probably shock you to learn you probably should go twice or three times a day, almost after every meal that'll stimulate you to go. And then no, no less than once every Every three days that's chronic constipation so okay. ideally once twice maybe even three times a day but form form is key as well form so in your actual stool form you're in your talking stool. About so this here, Bristol right? stool chart there's seven degrees of stool okay let's <laughs> right. bring up the chart here we here. go let's have a look. type one that's constipated that's the goat poop don't want to see that type no. two that's still a little bit constipated what you want is type three or four so okay. between type three and you know what you want that like an Olympic diver going into the toilet bowl <laughs> right you hear it you don't hear yeah. much of a splash you know, that's when you start to see type five six seven that's a mess that's probably a trip to Mexico or some kind of you know upset but if it's chronic and you have to talk to your doctor about this it could be irritable bowel syndrome you mentioned fiber and that's important in Absolutely. both cases right yeah. diarrhea and I think it surprises a lot of people constipation diarrhea you see a lot of products on the market that can help you for both of those same product Absolutely. are we not getting enough fiber in the foods that we eat do we not have to go to a supplement well you know first of all we're not getting enough fiber but let's always start with diet okay, okay. so a, a rainbow complete rainbow of fruits and vegetables and you can see I stacked the table here dominantly with green vegetables yes. all right kale that's been around for a long time that's got a lot of vitamin K, by the way, knits the bones, all kinds of other virtues to this stuff. But what you're looking at here for the majority, whether it's fruits or vegetables, this is insoluble fiber. That okay. means, oh God, cows digest it. We don't. You need this for roughage. It you know, creates about 60% of your stool by volume, okay. but it's insoluble. What we don't get nearly enough of, because it's harder to find in fruits and vegetables, is soluble fiber. And all we right. need more of that as well. Two reasons. First of all, it gets into us, soluble. It actually right. gets into our bloodstream, lowers cholesterol, but it's a prebiotic. That means so it what's the feeds. difference? Th what's the difference between a pre and a probiotic? Right. So probiotics are little organisms. They're live, and you can look right. at these on, on your store's uh, health food store, over the counter, for example, or specialized pharmacies. They're called CFUs, or colonizing forming units of actual live bacteria. Various strains and species. We may have heard of Lactobacillus acidophilus or Bifidobacterium. They are imperative. Different segments of your colon to actually create not only bulk in the stool, but your immune system. Right. This is 80 percent of your immune system is in your gut. Yes. It's called GALT or gut-associated lymph tissue so we need more of that now prebi or the probiotic is necessary to be fed they eat so we give them a soluble prebiotic it's food fertilizer to them all okay. right so, so what is this you have so here this then? is supplemental because we just can't find enough of this in our diets right so this is called sun fiber and it's actually a guar bean a partially hydrolyzed guar bean all right that means it's okay. broken apart we add this to water and what you'll notice in seconds when I mix this in it's as entirely soluble that will entirely disappear it's tasteless odorless you can sprinkle it on your salad you can drink really? it as a glass you know first thing in the morning you won't taste it or put it into your favorite shake or juice Health Canada, this is, where, this is where the importance lies. This is one product that exists on the market called Flora IBS Relief. When Health Canada issues a claim to a product in a health food store saying it will help, not only help, but manage IBS, that's really huge. That's, that's a trigger. That, that's a check mark. Because uh, oftentimes, uh, I find when we go to the doctor, they don't suggest the alternative. Uh, often I mean, they, they they just don't because they they're not educated well and you know that's it just really, too, maybe right? you know, don't have the radar on it but then when they look at something like this they well oh, health Canada approved for these conditions and it's evidence-based great research to back it up and it's all natural it can't conflict with drugs right that's when they should start to recognize and alert and you know, be recommending this kind of thing along with probiotics you know at the break we were talking about this idea that we're getting too many pro uh, antibiotics through not only ingesting them when we need to colds and flu and if right. they're bacteria related it's important to you know make the decision with your doctor to take these things but after which you need 
probiotics. They, it's hard to repopulate them. Right. Right. So getting that, you can't get this from your diet. You know, yogurt, sauerkraut. They may help maintain us, but they don't act therapeutically to reintroduce these absolutely imperative cultures in our gut. And so that actually, within a single dose, can cause the beginning of irritable bowel syndrome. Bryce, always a pleasure having you on Thanks, the show. Thanks, Derek. This I appreciate it. Great, great advice for Thank people you. at home. And